Tahotep's Double Cross. Introduction As in the first and second A degree rituals, we begin in an antechamber outside the vault. An initiator or guide of no lower than this two B degree in attainment themselves explains the knowledge lecture and the history, characters, and plot of the rite. Once the candidate confirms to the guide they understand this instruction, they enter the vault. Guide While Imhotep passed through the underworld, along the Milky Way, Tahotep, his son, was left as his appointed head of the Overseer's Order. While the couriers labored by day, the Overseers conserved their energy. But then, by night, the Overseers instructed the couriers in the higher arts of democracy, masonry, tarot, and the calendar, and all sorts of splendid wonders. They began to raise the pyramids by constructing an enormous enclosure around the entire base layer and filling it with water to float the blocks into place with a giant boat. All looked forward to Imhotep's return, but Tahotep did not overwork the workers. Tahotep was the wisest of all the overseers and beloved by the clay people. He instructed them in all of his father Imhotep's metaphysics, and they all became as learned as he in time. Nyarlathotep served as Tahotep's own vizier, and if Tahotep but lifted a finger on his right hand, Nyarlathotep would wave the thousands of workers to all move as one to the right. And if Tahotep lifted a finger on his left hand, Nyarlathotep would command the thousands of workers to all move in one wave to the left. Yet Tahotep was not full of pride, and served not as king, but only as court magician to the three great kings of our craft, Cheops, Kefir, and Menkare. The legions of undead all answered to the heart of Nyarlathotep, who offered it then to Tahotep, though only until the return of Imhotep, the coming time of which no one knew but Nyarlathotep. This ritual is about the times when Nyarlathotep showed Tahotep the catacombs beneath Giza, when Nyarlathotep told Tahotep that Imhotep was never coming back, and that he, Nyarlathotep was Tahotep's true father. The ritual continues when Imhotep returns as a chaos beast, judges Nyarlathotep a traitor, and switches bodies with him, thus sending Nyarlathotep in the form of the chaos beast back into the netherworld. The meaning of this ritual is to teach the Atlantean Mason the mechanism of transcending the mundane cares of material reality. Instruction If the candidate gives the word to affirm they understand, the guide ushers the candidate into the darkened vault and closes the door after them. In the middle of the darkened vault, the candidate sees an arcing domed grotto roofed with crystals above an underground lake on a sandbar near the closest shore beneath the peak of the catacombs dome arise two very tall men here stone blocks ancient with weather the one on the left of a dark metallic hue the one on the right of a brighter marble hue the candidate will come to see there is strange, indecipherable 
and ever-shifting information being projected as patterns within the crystalline veins of the two massive upright towers. These flash like slow lightning within the twin stones and this light alone illuminates the cavern. From the shadows behind the candidate's back, hiding behind the door of the vault as the candidate had entered, Nyarlahotep speaks. As he speaks, he places his grip on the candidate's right shoulder and then steps up beside them into the light. He is dressed as a vagabond mummy still, with blood staining the hieroglyphic inscriptions carefully painted onto his gauze wrappings. Nyarlahotep These are the pillars buried by Enoch in the city east of Eden in Atlantis, before the flood. Imhotep had them transported here. He discovered them by the stone of Ram, the keystone of Noah, that he found and deciphered just outside of Ur, in southern Babylon. As he journeyed northwest to pass by Sinai into Egypt, Ram, the tablet of testimony, was the key to all languages once. Its geometric shape is timeless, and the markings upon it, the inscriptions of seven of the ten archangels, the pre-diluvial Atlantean king's list. I tell you the splendor of Ram shall be known to all on judgment day, and is yet taught to all who seek to know it. It is a testament to the seven sinister angels who rebelled and who were cast down into this material universe. I, Nyarlahotep, am wise of the dawn of time, as was Imhotep before he died. Those who follow the Ramstone now, seeking to find these twins stilly, will get lost and fall into confusion, for now Enoch's tomb is empty. And these twin steely are here, buried beneath the three kings' tombs. Instruction Nyarlahotep guides the candidate by their shoulder and begins leading them down a slight slope towards the crystal irradiated stone main hairs. One dark, one light. They step to the water's edge. The closer Nyarlahotep draws towards the twin megaliths, the more he stoops down and assumes a more lizard-like posture and visage. He urges the candidate toward the two obelisks, and they begin wading out ankle-deep in the shallow waters of the lake's shore. Nyarlahotep I suppose you'd like me to tell you what they say. They are written in Atlantean, and contain all the secrets of the universe. It is these each of my corpses seeks to replicate by quarrying the Ashlars to build the tomb for the three great kings, who we call the Three Fools, for this project is damned folly without these stones being here. Without them, the resurrected dead would not obey me. Just as they are bound to my heart, my heart is bound to these two steely. The kings know nothing of these catacombs, nor of this lake, nor of these stelae. This secret is known to myself and Imhotep, and now you also, but to us alone. We three are Thoth, Osiris, and Horus. Do you not see, Tahotep? Just as Imhotep gave his soul for mine, did he become like Thoth, God over time, for he dwells now beyond all time. And just as Imhotep assumed the God form of Thoth, so too did I assume the God form of Osiris. 
Now, let me tell you how the heavens have already recorded and dictate our destinies. Imhotep is Thoth. I am Osiris. And you are Horus, Tahotep. To raise Osiris, Thoth gave his own life, you see. And so, Imhotep shall never return from the underworld. He sacrificed himself and has given you, his son, over to me. Now, I am the Great Works Architect, for, I assure you, Imhotep is no more. Instruction The two stones loom over them on a sandbar. Nyarlahotep climbs up the slight embankment. His face appears to be that of a supernaturally large serpent. He stands beside the bright one and reaches out to touch it. As his fingers contact the stone's cold surface, a jolt of lightning bursts through them both, causing a Jacob's Ladder to arise between them. From within this, the Chaos Beast of Nyarlahotep's true form appears. Voice over. Booming. It is I, Nyarlahotep. It is I, Tahotep. It is I, Imhotep, returned from beyond the grave, in the realms of nothingness, beyond even the underworld. I have come back from beyond the abyss that outstretches the deepest nether realms. Bow now my son. Bow before your father who is conquered in eternity. Bow now, you traitor, for either way this chaos beast's form is once more your fate for your treachery against me. Instruction. The chaos beast's image in the Jacob's Ladders, arcing sparks quavers like the reflection of the moon on a rippling pond. Suddenly, the reptilian arisen corpse of the mummified Nyarlahotep is possessed by the soul of Imhotep, and the chaos beast's infernal form possessed once more by Nyarlahotep. Imhotep, portrayed by the actor previously portraying Nyarlahotep. Let it all come down. My revelation shall outlast it all, for I have been to the world beyond Beriah, and I have surveyed the new Jerusalem. Its twelve gates are the twelve houses of the Amduat. Its seven-sided church I have beheld inside and out, and it is like the seven Bay of Ra between the Ka and the Ak. Instruction. The Chaos Beast looms through the electricity screen. It is a puppet armature of tentacles, centered around a corpuscle eye, red with rage and streaming tears. Its pupil is a mouth, and its iris a row of hooked fangs. Nyarlahotep, booming. Tahotep. You may escape, but Imhotep, you shall not. I shall pursue you until the final Sabbath and see your clay corpse buried beyond the wasteland's outskirts on the edge of nothingness. Your home for eternity shall be to guard the west bank of the river Styx. Your destiny will be to wander eternally alone, licking sand to search for salty silt. You will yet suffer my fate for me. I will never die. I will get you. Instruction. Imhotep urges the candidate away, toward the shoreline and the door of the vault, away from the twin pillars and the chaos beast near Lahotep. Imhotep, turning to Nyarlahotep. Nyarlahotep, O oh terrifying feverish insanity, 
You cannot harm me because I am one loyal to God who sent me. I have cast you already into the emptiness of the abyss once by my word. I shall not say it again except by action. Come at me and your will will wilt, O chaos beast. You shall forever lose what little light of hope you have left. Forsake now. Nyarlahotep. You are unwise to be unjust to me, your servant, O Vizier. For I have sat upon the seat to which you would now ascend. The corpses are all of me, all mine alone to command. I was bound only to this portal until you returned my true form to me. Now I cross the threshold once and forever to dwell in the land of the living and leave behind the world of the dead with you in it. Imhotep Nyarlahotep, you, whose one eye hungers for justice, must repent now your lust for the powers of this world. I warn you, they are only an illusion, and I can turn them against you. Nyarlahotep It is too late for you now. I summon Marduk, king of demons. I summon Cthulhu, of chaos and formlessness. I summon Satan and Moloch, the twin-headed devil. I summon the host of all Hades to spread your plague upon this realm, the material universe. Fly free, all you damned gargoyles. I unchain thee in Imhotep's name. Instruction. As the puppeteered armature of tentacles undulates, the whole of the chaos beast's pupil mouth dilates to engorge the sclera. Through his eye, Nyarlahotep vomits himself inside out. Black smoke bellows out of the emptied out Nyarlahotep, whose tentacles now take root around the twin main hairs as he stretches himself open across the gateway to the underworld. His remaining flesh gapes agog and tears through to reveal a portal to the inferno of hell. Imhotep, to candidate. Tahotep, my son, go to call all the undead to return as warriors behind you. I, in Nyarlahotep's clay body, must enter the gateway of Nyarlahotep and battle him upon the threshold before he can widen the rift in the veil turning again to Nyarlahotep. You cannot cast curses before a man sent to you by God. If you will not approach me and be laid waste by my righteousness here, then I shall take my word to you now. Instruction. As Imhotep approaches Nyarlahotep, the initiator, or guide, who prepared the candidate and who is snuck up behind them, now takes the candidate arm in arm and escorts them towards and out the vault door and into the antechamber, discussing with the candidate as they walk the meaning of this degree's ritual. Guide. So you see how we transcend the mortal world while still alive. We must delve deep into our minds inside our quantum thoughts that guide our nerves to control our DNA. We must conquer the urge to destroy and do evil there, deep within each of us. Know that only you can do this for yourself, but that you are not alone in doing it. Truly, there are a legion of us who are seeking to transcend the mortal world while still alive. We all work together in this great karma yoga. The battle between order and chaos is within each of us. We must therefore live life rightly as a warrior for increased perception, increased awareness, and expansion of consciousness, both our own, others, and that of the entire cosmos. The true overseer's order is open to any who have become inverted from the mundane, 
and it is thus comprised only of those who have graduated from labor by working to perfect themselves. Because we have transcended cares for the material world, we are able to look down upon it from above, but only if we work to perfect ourselves do we preserve our place on the plains above. We can each do good alone. When we all work together, we can do even better. Therefore, seek out and surround those who do good alone, and, in invisible silence, encourage their good deeds. When they are ready to, they will learn how to assist others, and to command their reality by communing with their inner will and confronting the conflict between good and evil. In the deepest realms of the seeker's mind, they find this inverting dualism, for it is the binary language of our quantum thoughts themselves. We input binary logic and output creative uncertainty, and that is how our mind makes itself manifest around us in our material world. Each of us is like the bright singularity at the umbilical navel between a parent black hole and a baby universe. The fabric of the space-time continuum itself softens, melts, and molds itself to the touch of the mind. But only those of us who knowingly and rightly do good deeds and thus perfect their karma know how to sustain and to control our mental grasp on our own realities. We understand the multiverse surrounds the outside of the womb of our perception. We understand how to manifest rightly because we have chosen to conquer the dualism of good and evil by asserting our innermost will over the most fundamental quantum uncertainty. If you do not understand, you will have plenty of time for asking questions. For now you are considered a true self-overseer. Welcome to the Overseer's Order.